Okay, one more. We've got that something that can be factored once again. So we need to first all these problems. We want to make sure the bottom is factored, so you know which rule to use. This only has a common factor of x that we're allowed to pull out, and we get this as a result. We can't do any more factoring because x squared plus 2 is something that cannot be factored. Okay, so what we have here is this is actually going to be an example of rule number 3. This here is considered to be an irreducible polynomial. If it's irreducible, that means that when we, when we split it up, we have to have the, the x term on top when we write that. Now this part can use uh, rule number 1, so we're just going to go ahead and do uh, a1 over x, and that's going to be it. Now, for the next one here, this part, normally I would have that to the n, so the, the rule number 3 has it to the power of n. Normally I would start this out at 1 and keep on going all the way up until I reach the highest power. Well, in this case, the highest power actually is 1. So because it is, that means I'm just going to write x squared plus 2 to the first power, and that's it. I'm not going to have any more terms here. Normally I would have it to the Next one would be the second power, the third power, the fourth power, but since I have a power of 1 here, that's going to be it. I just have this only for my next fraction. Now when you have this, you have to do a2x plus, um, for this one, we're going to use b2 there. So uh, we have to have an x term there. It has to be a linear term on top whenever you have a irreducible polynomial on the bottom. So this right here is going to be our setup with, with the decomposition. So now that we have this, we're ready to get our common denominators. We have to make all the bottoms look like x times x squared plus 2. So uh, we'll rewrite that over here. We have this. I want all the denominators to look like this one, x times x squared plus 2. So what I do is I'm going to multiply each one by what it's missing. So here's the first fraction. I'm missing the x squared plus 2. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x squared plus 2. This next one here, I have a2x plus b2 over x squared plus 2. This one is missing the x term, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x. Now we have all the denominators are the same, we're just going to set the numerators equal to each other. So you have x minus 7 is going to equal a1 times x squared plus 2. And then the next one is I have an x times all this. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep it x times a2x plus b2. So now this is going to be our equation that we're now going to use. And so next thing we have to do is decide whether we want to use the convenient values method or if we want to use the equating coefficients method. Okay, so here is our equation. And now we're at the point where we got to decide whether we want to use convenient values method or equating coefficients. Now most of the problems we've done in this section so far, if you've been watching these videos uh, so far, we've been using the convenient values method and generally that's going to be easier for a lot of problems. So the question is, is there ever a time where a convenient values method is not going to be the most convenient? Actually this example here I'll sh is one that will work out where the equating coefficients is actually going to be way easier than doing convenient values. Now if you take a look at the notes, in the notes that follow this section, there's a link to those notes in the description of this video. I actually did the problem by using convenient values and it was pretty long. We ended up getting a system of equations we had to solve and uh, it ended up being kind of a lot of work. So I'm going to show you that actually equating coefficients might actually be the easier method in this case. So let's go ahead and do this one by equating coefficients. Okay, so in order to equate coefficients, we have to actually multiply all this out and then set exponent or set the uh, coefficients equal to each other. So let's go ahead and expand it out here. X minus 7 is going to equal, if I multiply this out, I have a1x squared plus 2a1. And then multiply this out plus a2x squared plus b2x. So now I have all this expanded. We need to match coefficients together. So the question is, if, if I have the square terms, what do I match it up with over on the left hand side since there is no x squared? Well, technically there is one, we just don't see it. We can write that as 0x squared. So technically there's a 0x squared out here in that problem. So if I take these two coefficients, the a1 and the a2, basically I can do a1 plus a2, all that's going to be times 
uh, x squared uh, right here, and then I have a b2x, and then I have a 2a1 in the end. So here's my x squared, my x term, and my constant term. On this side over here, we notice that there is no x squared term. So one equation I can get is a1 plus a2 is going to equal zero. There's no coefficient to match it up with, so that's why this method actually works pretty well for uh, doing the equating coefficients because we, we have a zero here um, and that's going to be it. Now, we have uh, an, only one x term here. Well, we only have one x term over here. So the coefficient on the x over here is a 1, which means automatically we know what b2 should be. That's the only x on both sides. So that's the only time, that's the only way we can get the coefficients equal is if b2, b2 is equal to 1. Okay, so now we have that complete. Now the last case, we only have one constant also here. One constant is equal to only one constant on that side. So therefore, all we have to do now is do 2a1 is equal to negative 7, and if we divide both sides, we get a1 is equal to negative 7 halves. So now, we already know two out of the three values. Since we know this one, this equation, a1 plus a2 equals 0, well, we already know a1 has got to be negative 7 halves. So negative 7 halves plus a2 equals 0. That means that if I bring that over, a2 is going to have to be positive 7 halves. So now we know all three values, a1, a2, and, and, and b2. So that was a lot easier and a lot quicker to do by equating coefficients method. So now all we have to do is write our final answer by putting them back into our original fraction here. So let's go ahead and erase this and I'll go ahead and write the final answer. a1 is negative 7 halves over x and then this one is going to be 7 halves x plus uh, b2 is 1. All that's going to be over x squared uh, plus 2. So depending on, on your teacher, if they want you to re rewrite this, um, you may need to uh, rewrite it as far as not getting rid of those uh, the double fractions there. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll work with the first one there. The first one, we're going to flip that, and that's if you multiply it, it's going to be negative 7 over uh, 2x. So we get that as that one. Now this one over here, uh, what we can do is we can get a common denominator on top and then that way we can combine it with this down below. So that way we have one fraction on top and one fraction down below. So if you get common denominators with the top, what you'll get here if you multiply 2 over 2, you get 7x plus 2 over 2 here by combining that together. And then we have x squared plus 2 down below. So now we have our fraction over a fraction, negative 7 over 2x. And then this part, we're going to flip that and we get 7x plus 2 on top over 2 times x squared plus 2 on the bottom. So again, treat this over 1 top fraction times the reciprocal of the bottom. That's how you divide uh, fractions. That's why we, want, we wanted to get a single fraction on top first because then that way we can flip that and get this as our final answer. So here, that should be what, uh, what our final answer is going to look like combine together. So if I, again, if I take all this, get common denominators, combine it together, I should end up with this that we had uh, from the very beginning. So this is the correct answer for decomposition.